Hello, my name is John Rose, and in this video, I'd like to take a closer look at Tony Wright. Now, I've had a lot of you guys ask me if I'm familiar with Tony Wright, and there's a good reason why you're asking me this, because you see the similarities, similarity between our two stories. We both have identified the same pieces to the puzzle. We both realized that long ago, everyone was saying the same thing. We used to have a golden age. What happened? Why don't we know? Why is it every version of the fall doesn't make any sense? And we can't do anything with it. Why do we accept that bullshit? <laughs> because we've been bombarded so long with bullshit, that's all we know. Now what I'd like to do for a moment, and I've done this only a couple times, is, and that is to play back uh, part of a, of a video by Tony Wright. I'm just going to turn this thing on and let you guys listen to this, and then I'll come back afterwards and we'll go from there. Remember, and interestingly, in the modern data, the left hemisphere is incredibly bad at context. It cannot juggle more than a couple of bits of information and put them into a coherent picture. That's something it's very deficient in. Hence, our modern science is called reductionist science. It's seen as a very good way of looking in detail. Actually, it's, it's a symptom of pathology. It's because our neural system can no longer hold the whole picture all at once. Some people can. Some people have access. And they can juggle phenomenal amounts of information and kind of rearrange it in their minds. Typically, most people can't, and yet that's what's doing the science. So we have all this specialist data and very few people talking to each other. And it's a problem that's acknowledged, it's known about, but it's not seen as a pathology. It's not seen as a symptom of a dysfunctional neural system. So I'd say, you know, even addressing these questions, even the way we look at the data, you have to factor all that in to the possibility that we have a neurological condition. Again, it shouldn't be it shouldn't be a threat. This shouldn't be something that we should be worried about. If our neural system is fully functional, what have we got to lose? It's just a sensible thing to do, surely, to check in once in a while that our primary equipment is as functional as it can be. That should be the same thing to do. If there's any evidence whatsoever that there's, a, that there's even a, me, a moderate problem with our neural system, surely a sane response would be to seriously and thoroughly investigate it from as many perspectives as possible. Now, all I need to do is create, you know, reasonable doubt. Well, I think there's not reasonable doubt, there's phenomenal doubt, there's overwhelming evidence is a serious problem. And in fact, I go back to the earlier, earlier parts of, of, of what I said. I think the condition is so serious, you know, it's, it's like classic mental ill health. When you have a mild condition, typically you're aware you have a problem. If you have a very serious problem, like full-blown dementia or Alzheimer's, generally you're blithely unaware you've got a problem. And I think that's how bad it's got, that's how bad a situation we find ourselves in through no fault of our own by the way i don't think this is nobody's to blame for this um and interestingly that's echoed in these ancient traditions they talk about this progressive slide and sliding into delusion to the point where we don't even know we're deluded anymore we all understand the concept you know i, I understand the concept of delusion it doesn't help me one jot at all knowing whether i'm deluded or not and that may be the situation we're in. However, there will be evidence. There must be evidence or it's wrong. And, I, you know, I'd stand by that. There must be evidence in, in the modern, you know, modern reductionist science for all its failings. It's generated mountains of data. And there will be a smoking gun there. Absolutely will be. But, but you, 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 you have nothing to suggest at this point as to what that... That's yeah, um, the 3548 to the 3833 minute mark. Uh, by uh, it was Tony Wright speaking in uh, one of his videos, oral sex, molecular engineering, and the fall from the brain of Eden. The fall from the brain of Eden. Gotta like Tony Wright. He knows what's going on, doesn't he? I've said this many times. There's obviously something seriously wrong with our species. All we have to do is pick up any history book or turn the news on any... Uh, or turn the, turn the news on any TV or radio station and it soon becomes painfully obvious that there is something seriously wrong with us. But we're in such a state of denial that we can't admit that we're the enemy. Not realizing that if we are the enemy, that also means we're the ones that we've been waiting for. So, where do we go from here? Well, we have to understand we have a problem. We're sick. 
I coined that condition hypoheliosis. We have an abnormally low biophoton level. And that comes from cooking our food. That's the fall of mankind. We got to stop and stop and ask ourselves, why is that piece of the puzzle so hard for us to find? Isn't that odd? When you look at all the, the, the explanations for the fall of mankind, none of them make any sense. And yet we believe them and accept them because we, we've been told them for so long by people we believe that we accept it. And that's just not how it works. So it's not easy to connect the dots. And I realize that some of us are better at than others. In fact, this reminds me of an article that uh, Mike Adams wrote. And I'm going to play back part of that also. And I skip around through this article. So some of it might not make sense because there'd be a paragraph or two missing. <clears throat> but I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to play what I recorded earlier and let you guys hear this article by Mike Adams. This ties into that article Mike Adams wrote in January 2011 on the 14th. A new measure of intelligence. Big picture thinking Trump's narrow-minded expertise. The point of all this is that there exists a huge gap in the practical intelligence among the so-called smartest people in our society. Most people can't assimilate the big picture. What's lacking in these so-called smart people is the ability to see the bigger picture by assimilating information from a large number of seemingly unrelated sources. Or stated another way, even some of the most high IQ people around can't see the big picture because they got lost in the details. Your typical oncologist, for example, almost certainly can't hold an intelligent conversation about nutritional therapies to support immune function because he only thinks of antioxidants as interfering with the toxicity of his cancer poisons. Likewise, a typical virologist persistently looks at viruses as the cause of disease but forgets that viruses are opportunist, which can only propagate when the terrain is sufficiently vulnerable. Thus, the best defense against invading microbes is to change the terrain, the person being affected, rather than to worry to try to rid the immediate area of all viruses. Memorization is not intelligence. My favorite physicist, Richard Feynman, was, especially, was an especially gifted pattern assimilator. He was able to look far beyond the conventional boundaries of particle physics and grasp many of the non-intuitive interconnections between matter, energy, and nature of reality itself. On a more practical level, people like Gerald Salente and even Alex Jones are also phenomenally gifted pattern assimilators. It's not that they are ridiculously good at remembering a lot of facts and figures in one very narrow area of science or knowledge. Rather, it's the fact that these types of people are able to see patterns in world events and thereby interact with the world around them at a far higher level of understanding than most other people. The pattern behind all that, of course, is that the agenda to control the world's food supply and soon thereafter charge monopoly prices for seeds. And the farmers used to be able to save for the free. A few people are able to see the story behind the story. These people are the meta-analyzers of the world around them. They have what I call a wide-angle view, a big, big picture view, where they can bring in observation data, observational data from a very large set of observational events in order to in infer greater understanding of the world around them. Joe Clemente can see the big picture of world finance, Author Anthony John Perkins is another big picture genius. Is another big picture genius in his own way for being able to see the patterns of government actions on a global scale. On the nutritional front, Dr. Richard Cunin, Cunin is one of the most remarkable pattern similarities you ever find. Alex Jones is one of the most astonishing assemblers of pattern out of chaos, and to see them and to see the underlying patterns behind the world events is truly amazing. And whether you agree with his conclusions or not, his mind is able to amass an extraordinary large amount of data from many sectors, health, freedom, police, state actions, legislation, legislative efforts, and so on. And then identify patterns that most other people would miss. This list is by no means exhaustive. There are many genius level pattern assimilators in our world. They are rarely recognized for their talents, however, if any, those who get the big picture often deride or criticize for doing so. Connecting so many dots, it seems, is dangerous for your reputation. Those who have the most success in the sciences in particular are the ones who keep their heads down and focus on their own tiny little corner of study without asking any of the really big questions like, hey, where did this grant money really come from? I consider myself something of a pattern assimilator as I see. 
Okay, that's Mike Adam. Mike Adam is saying I consider myself a, a gifted pattern assimilator. When I read that article, I said, well, that's a good way to describe the gift I was given. Uh, I'm able to look at a bunch of pieces of the puzzle and connect the dots. So that's my gift, and that's what I'm trying to do with you guys. And I realize some of you guys are struggling with me when I connect those dots. Because a lot of you can't handle the truth. I understand that. Uh, but remember, this is bigger than my ego. It's bigger than your ego. Don't uh, subscribe to me and, and, and not be part of this movement. You guys are the trim tabs out there. You're the first wave of heroes that are going to make a difference. And you're doing it right now. So many good people on my, on my YouTube channel right now sharing their experiences at different stages of a solid food vacation. And they're showing the world what happens when we get reconnected and bump out that serpent. Well, what happens? We're in for a treat.